Rivers. We rely on them for so much. Yet the health of our rivers is under threat. Colorado has 24 trans mountain diversions rerouting western slope snowmelt to front range population centers. We also have an obligation to lower basin states. One we are struggling to meet. Colorado's population is projected to nearly double by the year 2050. Where will this water come from? Where the water is, Colorado's western slope, our home rivers. These are the big picture threats facing western slope watersheds, and the Roaring Fork is no exception. Rachel Richards, who was county commissioner at the time, had the idea of the county needing to develop a program to protect healthy rivers, that we couldn't sit back and depend on others to look out for our interests. Pickin County is the um, largest contributor to the Colorado River before it hits the Gunnison. Our watershed as a whole, both the Roaring Fork and the Frying Pan, are about 38, 39% diverted currently, and there are existing water rights out there should they be perfected to take another 20% of our flows. The Front Range is powerful with population, they're powerful with the number of legislators that they have, and we're really in the bullseye. What would it be like in our valley to say we no longer have gold medal waters because the water temperatures are too high, because of climate change, and because of the dewatering? These are the issues that we need to be prepared to fight. As I began going to more regional and statewide meetings, I came back to my board and said, you know, guys, we're about to get rolled. We do not have the resources to fight this. In 2008, then Commissioner Richards spearheaded a ballot question asking voters to create and fund a program dedicated to safeguarding water quality and quantity in the Roaring Fork watershed. 62% of voters agreed, authorizing a perpetual one-tenth of one percent sales tax. During a recession, I mean, money's tight. Who wants to vote to have yourself taxed, right? I do think that the awareness had already been raised by the great environmental ethic in our community, the work of the uh, Roaring Fork Conservancy and other environmental groups. I think that people were just very aware that, uh, you know, you have to safeguard your assets. And that's what this was all about. Pitkin County's Healthy Rivers program was born, the first of its kind in Colorado. By 2010, the pioneering program was swimming in the deep end. You really can't do anything in the world of water without having a lawyer around and without having an engineer or a hydrologist around, and you need a handful of biologists to boot. Hard work that costs real money. The Healthy Rivers program made it possible for Pitkin County to fund this vital work, with the future of our beloved rivers hanging in the balance. The Crystal River is a target. Here is a stream, one of few, if not the only one of its size in the state that still has not one dam. And when people are looking at where, what can we dam up, where can we store, this looks like a place to do it. But what can we do to hold on to what we can? Here's the best example right here, the defeat of uh, <coughs> of the Placida and Osgood Reservoirs. In the early 2000s, there was long-standing concern over decades-old conditional water rights to develop two large dams on the Crystal River. If ever realized, those rights would have submerged miles of the Crystal Valley under two huge reservoirs of water and mud. 
The Healthy Rivers program funded a comprehensive opposition effort and helped lead its vocal and legal advocacy. They hired lawyers, experts in, in water law. We were filing formal statements of opposition in the water court. The owners of these rights began to fear they get an adverse ruling. So a, a compromise was reached where they agreed not to build the dams. On the heels of that victory, Pitkin County commissioners and river board members, past and present, have led the community's ongoing effort to permanently protect the Crystal River with a federal wild and scenic designation. If we peel back the politics, we peel back all the obstacles that are in our way, can we get to what is the right thing to do? The Healthy Rivers Program and the board are willing to go there. Giving voice to our rivers has become a hallmark of the Healthy Rivers Program, whose full-throated advocacy has, in many cases, improved coordination between agencies. We were able to develop relationships with three entities that were previously pretty hostile to interest in the Upper Roaring Fork. And I think right now we have a great mutual respect and we have a great understanding of each other's position and we have a, on top of all that, we have a great willingness to cooperate with one another. Partnership has always been a pillar of the Healthy Rivers Program's progress. Often, the best way to help our rivers is to write a check to the organization best positioned to do the work. The grants program was probably one of the larger aspects of our mission. We've been able to provide support for a lot of different programs. Some of the, the local um, municipal entities, it's helped them make some of their projects actually happen. One of the organizations that we've worked with extensively since the very um, inception of this program is the Roaring Fork Conservancy. And they have a wonderful education program that's involved with all the local schools. We've also provided grants for some of their scientific research. If it's part of our mission, we want to get in there and be able to help those organizations do the best that they can. Over time, I think, you know, it helped us learn, the board learn and the program learn about, you know, what people were thinking about out there and what were the big ideas. And it actually helped us come up with our own big ideas. In 2017, the program worked with Wild Rose Education to birth the first annual Healthy Rivers Youth Water Summit, a one-day conference where more than 80 students engaged with local leaders on water issues. Understanding water use, your water use, your community's water use, and having explored that with your peers, that will shape some very important water-related decisions in the future. The following year, the idea was expanded to include the Youth Water Leadership Program. Students that were particularly interested or maybe had more knowledge, have them become leaders and spend some time during the summer to really learn about some of the issues and help organize the Water Summit. That really gives them some great job skills and provides an opportunity to go in way more in depth into water issues. Studies. Gee, we've studied everything. We've got so much data, but so what? What does that do? Uh, nothing, if you don't do anything with it. Nowhere is the necessity of a robust funding source more evident than moving a river project from a paper study to real world implementation. The Healthy Rivers Fund has allowed Pitkin County to do just that with the program's in-house river health enhancement projects. One such project realized a recreational in-channel diversion, or RISD, water right on the Roaring Fork River. RISDs protect a subset of in-stream flow from future water development by putting that water to use for recreation. In other words, for fun. To meet the fun requirement, Pitkin County built the Roaring Fork Whitewater Park in Basalt. The park's location was chosen to maximize the Rissid's flow protection for the river. 
the frying pan, with releases from rudai, augments the flow of the rolling fork, and so you don't really see stressed out conditions from a water uh, quantity perspective below the pan, but you sure see them above. There's a particular one that was just crazy bad. I mean, you could literally walk across the stream bed and keep your feet dry, right where the rissid is now. And this location was immediately above the frying pan. So it was a spot that if we could call water to this location, we could benefit it all the way to the frying pan confluence. Pipkin County laid the legal groundwork for the rissid in 2010 completed the Whitewater Park in 2016, and received the water rights absolute decree in 2020. Entities from around the state and the West are gonna be trying to get any of that available water. It's nice to know that we've got a little chunk of it that will help to ensure peak stream flows and as a side benefit, provide some recreation. It's pretty awesome to go down there and see people of all ages enjoying the, the site. There's kayakers, there's boogie boarders, there's people going through on their inflatables. In the late summer, there's no better place to take a dip in the nice, clean, cool waters of the Rowing Fork. Preventing future water grabs is one thing. Reclaiming water that's already spoken for is something entirely different. Often the work of the Healthy Rivers and Streams Board is behind the scenes. We had a lengthy lawsuit, settlements, and uh, even fighting at the state legislature over our ability to hold um, the Front Range water providers accountable for changing their use from agriculture to municipal without ever going to water court. And the outcome of that case was, as far as I know, the first time any West Slope water got returned to the West Slope. In 2009, Pitkin County learned the city of Aurora was using water diverted from our headwaters for non-decreed purposes. That led to a multi-year legal challenge, ultimately landing in the Colorado Supreme Court. In 2016, the court ruled in the Western Slope's favor. Aurora sought a settlement with Pitkin County. Negotiations led to an intergovernmental agreement dubbed the Roaring Fork Busk Ivanhoe Bypass. The real benefit we got was uh, um, up to an additional 1,000 acre feet of water to the Upper Roaring Fork. And to the extent feasible, it can be delivered to the Upper Roaring Fork when the Roaring Fork needs it. In other words, not during high water, not during times when we're getting all the flow anyway, but during the times when Twin Lakes is running. So we get a bypass. Water that they would otherwise be taking through the tunnel and developing for consumptive use on the other side of the mountain is now just released back into the Upper Roaring Fork for the Upper Roaring Fork, which is great. And you know, a thousand acre feet doesn't sound like a lot, but at the time we did this, the value of an acre foot over on the other side where this water was going was about $50,000. It's about a $50 million deal. For all the Pitkin County Healthy Rivers program's tangible gains, there is one less obvious benefit that has made the most difference for our rivers. The biggest success is creating for Pitkin County a strong voice for the county, for the citizens in the county, in this, this world of water. A seat at the water table, our most valuable asset when the fate of our rivers is on the agenda. There's no knowing going into some things what'll develop. You have to do what you can identify as the right thing and good things will come from it. Ten years is but the blink of an eye in water time. We have celebrated many gains. Yet our rivers need a voice today more than ever. The problems in the Colorado River now as a whole are coming home to roost. Drought, drought, drought. There's no new molecules of water. And overdevelopment and overdependence is really going to change the way things look.
Hopefully we've planted a seed. You've got to have hope. Whether it's people who worked on that campaign 10 years ago or donated to it or helped with the ads or wrote a letter, it's paying off for us all every day. And I just really feel grateful and thank them.